Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ryan Rampersad, and today I will be joined by Chris Rampersad. Hi, I'm Chris. I have the phone in my hand. It is a Pixel 3a. And yes, we will be talking about the Pixel 3a. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO69. For this episode, I have interviewed my mom, Chris, about her phone that I bought her for Mother's Day, the Pixel 3a. To start off with, let's learn a little bit about how you use your phone. Well, then I use it for Facebook and Instagram. I use it for audible books you know all the other apps and I have some I have a work app on it I use it for conference calls I have to make actual telephone calls for work um, maps uh, in case I'm going somewhere so I can navigate and I'll do the play movie Google play movie app so I can watch um, shows or YouTube I have that I have the new Wizards Unite I have Ingress. My mom is kind of a casual smartphone user, so I will intersperse her commentary with my own thoughts and opinions on the Pixel 3a. Let's just start out with the pricing for this phone, since that's what we always start out with. For the Pixel 3a line, Google decided to price the phones very aggressively, and we were quite surprised. There are only two variants of this phone, and that means there are only two SKUs for this phone the Pixel 3a and the Pixel 3a XL. The Pixel 3a costs just $399, and the Pixel 3a XL costs $479. And both models are exactly the same in terms of storage capacity at 64 gigabytes. Next up, let's talk about the size of the phone and its display. Uh, How do you like the size of the phone overall? The size is perfect for me. That's good. Was it bigger or smaller than your previous phone? Well, I probably said which one it was when I had it in my hand compared to the old one. But now it's been so long, I don't even remember. It just seems fine. The Pixel 3a has a 5.6 inch 1080p panel at about 444 ppi, which is really good for a phone this size. And it is an OLED panel, which means it has the best feature in the world, which is ambient and always on display. The ambient display is fine. Let's talk about the physical appearance next. The Pixel 3a does have a chin and forehead very similar to previous Pixel phones. But for my mom, this is not a big change because her previous phone, the Moto G5 Plus, also had very, very large chins and foreheads. So large, in fact, that the fingerprint sensor used to be on the front side in the chin. The Pixel 3a has a 3000 mAh battery, and the Pixel 3a XL has a 3700 mAh battery. Now, it would be great to have the bigger battery in the smaller phone, but despite that, my mom likes the battery life as is. The battery life is good. I have the chargers, but I don't have to charge it very frequently. I attribute some of this to being a new phone. That means it has a new battery and there are less old and rogue applications kind of draining away battery life. Now, despite the battery life being pretty good, my mom still likes a feature from the old phone. Okay, well, there was a widget on this phone or my old phone that had, it would tell me about the battery. So I could see a widget and know how long it had before it needed a charge. I didn't have that with this. The previous phone, the Moto G5, was micro USB, which means my mom had to transition from micro USB to USB type C. Let's hear how that went. This is a USB C type. I didn't have an issue changing over. I just needed more chargers. You know, once you get them all and replace the old ones, that seemed to work fine. Now, this is still an ongoing process. My mom has about, oh, I don't know, four or five different chargers she uses throughout her daily life and cables to go with them. But sometimes she does find herself occasionally in a place where she would like to charge 
and she does not have a spare dongle or cable ready for that situation. Previous Pixel phones had dual firing front facing speakers. That means the audio quality was on average better than other phones. The Pixel 3a line had to make concessions somewhere, and where they made those concessions are in the speaker setup. Instead, this year, the phone speaker is at the top in the earpiece and at the bottom as a bottom firing speaker. Uh, the speakers seem quieter for me. I do some conference calls and I'm on speakerphone, and I sometimes don't feel like I can hear them as well as I could on the old phone. One of the distinctions between the Pixel 3a and the parent line, the Pixel 3 line, is that for some reason Google thought it would be funny to include the headphone jack in the Pixel 3a line. This enables somebody like my mom, who has no knowledge of Bluetooth headphones, to use the phone like a normal person. And she does. I use it for audible books, which I really like. An aspect of the Pixel line that I never gave much thought to was where it placed its buttons. What I mean by that is the power button and the volume rockers are placed along the same side. My mom recently noticed why that's kind of inconvenient. I noticed for this I have trouble trying to get a screenshot. You know, sometimes you want to get a capture of a screenshot and I still can't push the buttons to get it to work right. My mom was able to take screenshots just fine on her old phone. I could do it on my old phone and I could do, there was a couple ways to do it. I could do both of them. Here, it might take me three tries to do it. And I think it's because the button configuration was a little bit different. Rockers on the left and power button on the right. Another big change for this phone versus my mom's old phone was where the fingerprint sensor actually is. On the Moto G5, the fingerprint sensor is on the front in the chin, and it's always there staring at you. But on this phone, on the Pixel 3a, the fingerprint sensor is nestled away neatly in the back, like most Pixel phones. The fingerprint sensor? Yeah, that was interesting, having it on the back. When I first saw that, I thought, what? <laughs> During her first couple of days of using the phone, it was kind of a struggle, and she would often try to hit the bottom of the phone subconsciously. I got used to it. Now I don't even notice that it was different than the old phone, which had it on the front. Let's talk about everybody's favorite Pixel topic, the camera. I thought I was going to be blown away by the Pixel camera. I haven't had a Pixel camera since the Pixel 1 many years ago. I took a series of test photos between the S10 Plus, my personal phone, and the new Pixel 3a that I ordered for my mom. And I don't think I was necessarily that impressed with the camera. My mom likes it, though. I like the camera. The camera's good. The picture pictures it takes are very clear. They seem brighter than the old phone. The Pixel 3a camera takes obviously better photos than the Moto G5. It takes sharper photos brighter photos, especially in low light. In addition to that, the Pixel 3a camera opens a little slower, usually, than the Samsung Galaxy S10 camera, but it actually takes individual photos a little bit faster on average. That can be important when you're trying to get, I don't know, a picture of a moving dog, for example. Take a look at the show notes for an album of some of the pictures I took to compare the S10 Plus and the Pixel 3a's camera. Another interesting hardware aspect of the Pixel 3a is its processor. The Pixel 3a uses a Snapdragon 670 instead of a more traditional 800 line series chip. That means it's a little bit less powerful and is a little bit less power efficient. There were other chips Google could have chosen that were more powerful and more efficient, but they may have been more expensive and that might have been why they didn't use them. Uh, how how have you felt the speed of the phone has been? Does it feel fast? Does it feel fluid? Yes, I would say so. During my testing initially, I felt that often I was waiting an extra beat or an extra two beats to sort of get the apps open that I was looking to open. App switching was fine, and most apps stayed in memory as far as I was concerned. But for those that weren't, I had to wait just an, 
a little bit longer and it was noticeable at the time. The Pixel 3a is the first phone that my mom has used with Android 9 on it. Previously, the Moto G 5 had a version of Android that was pretty up-to-date, Android 8, but there were some notable changes in Android 9, especially on a Pixel device, that were unique, such as the time moving over to the left side of the phone. I did notice when I got it, the time moved from one side to the other side. And the home button row changing a little bit, going away from its more traditional triangle circle square design to this new contextual back button and pill home button design. I thought for sure this new design was going to confuse my mom, and I thought I would never stop hearing about it. But to my surprise, she never really brought it up, and I think that's really interesting. You can never really know what to expect when a user uses a new user interface for the first time, and you might have some preconceived notions of how they will react to it, but you just never know. Every phone has its quirks and some technical issues while in use. My mom's Pixel 3a is no exception. She experienced a couple of issues with it. Then I had compass and GPS issues. That was really bad. I was playing a game and I noticed the GPS was off. And then when I actually went somewhere, I was driving and it had me going south when I was actually heading north. So it was way off. Upon restarting, that GPS issue seems to have been resolved and has not returned since. Now, this is the best part of the show because now I get to complain all about Google. When I bought the Pixel 3a, it was a week before Mother's Day in May. I received my Pixel 3a three days after launch, or so, and I did the usual inboxing, and I did the usual setup, and I tinkered with it a little bit, took some pictures, installed some apps to, you know, test it out to make good content for a good review. Well. A funny thing happened after I was setting up my mom's phone a few days later. I popped in her SIM card when we were ready to switch from her old phone to her new phone. And I just could not get it to connect to the network. I thought I was doing something wrong. I did everything I could think of. I tried different phone diagnostic modes. I restarted dozens of times. I wiped the cache. Eventually, I relented and undid all of the work I did to set the phone up, and I did a factory reset, and I just could not get her SIM card to work from her old phone to work in the new phone in the Pixel 3a. So I tried my own personal T-Mobile SIM card from my Galaxy S10. It still didn't work. Nothing seemed to work. What was weird was the phone would recognize that there was a SIM card inside, it would recognize the phone number attached, but the network would never connect to the SIM card, ever. I initiated a support call with Google, and we went through for about an hour various methods of troubleshooting the SIM card and network connectivity issue. And at the end of it, after I had tried with the support representative all of the same things that I personally had tried, They concluded that, yes, it was totally broken, somehow. It seemed to me that whatever internal radio the phone had was simply disconnected from the phone proper. The phone could use Wi-Fi, but it seems like the phone's mobile antenna, the mobile modem, was just disconnected. You can imagine inside, the little cable was simply just unplugged or just ever so slightly not connected. So that night, about a week after I got the phone, I boxed it all up, put it back in the box it came in, found some scrunched up plastic wrap I had lying around, made sure it wasn't going to bounce around and break on its way, and I sent it back to Google. Now, allegedly, they had us send it back to the Investigation Repair Center where they probably take these phones apart whenever they're broken, especially on the early side of launch. 
I opted for the sooner and I opted for the faster replacement option where you send back the phone immediately. They place another hold on your credit card and they send you another phone immediately. This way, the phones would be in transit at the same time and there would be less waiting on my mom's part after she had to wait a week for me to play with the phone anyway. Eventually, the phone arrived about a week later and the second handset luckily worked just fine. I will leave in the show notes a link to the post I left on the Google Pixel subreddit about this malfunctioning Pixel 3a handset that we had for the first week or so. So overall, how is the Pixel 3a? So, you know, in terms of hardware, in terms of specs, it's certainly nothing remarkable. It's just fast enough for a person who isn't a phone fanatic to enjoy. It has enough RAM for a person who wants to do a few games here and there to use Facebook and Instagram to enjoy what they like. It has a big enough screen to get the job done. It has a small enough handset footprint to actually hold, which is really nice. It has a camera that's as good as the Pixel 3's camera, and yet the handset overall costs half as much. It even has a headphone jack. What is there to dislike about this phone? Well, the reliability may be questionable still. We've seen that in the GPS and in the actual handset uh, quality control with the network connection. There may be some issues there. It's hard to say. It could have just been an isolated incident, though. Are you looking for a flagship, but at a $400 price? If you're looking for a flagship, this is not a flagship. This is merely a ship. It's a good phone that will get you the parts of a phone that matter. If you're looking for a flagship, though, but at a more reasonable price, there are other options out there, like the OnePlus 7 or the Galaxy S10e or the iPhone XR, both of which are technically flagship phones, but at a traditional 700 or so dollar cost. If you are one of those people that likes buying their phone off of contract and at full unlocked retail price up front, this is the phone that I would recommend for you if you're not looking for a flagship. If it's just a phone that you need to get things done and you're not going in for the iPhone or the Galaxy or any other name brand, this is a great option for you. And that's all for this episode of Second Opinion. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO69. If you would like to leave us some comments or have ideas for future reviews, feel free to leave us a comment at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Have a good one. Have a good one. It might be a different user than some of your other users, but for me, the phone, I use it for conference calls. I have to make actual telephone calls for work. And then, oh, here's one. <laughs> We're going to not take that. That's a spam call. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.